It's biology with Mr. B. Biology with Mr. B. That's me. Hello, Year 12. Hopefully, a relatively short YouTube video lesson introducing what I want to do in the live lesson uh, this week. So this is my little introduction to ECGs, electrocardiograms. So this is actually the last spec point in the entirety of transport animals, therefore the last spec point from me of AS. So after this, I can move on to Year 13 stuff. Yay! Well, okay, yay for me. You're probably not that as excited. But I promise you, that's really good. We're in the right place, where we should be. We're doing good. The spec point we're looking at is uh, 3.1.2H, the use and interpretation of electrocardiograms, ECG tracers. But in all fairness, actually using them, interpreting them, I want to do that in the live lesson when I know that I've got 100% of your attention um, and we can really talk through it and ask as many questions as possible. So this is really just hopefully just to set it up uh, so you're ready to go in that live lesson. So first little game to think about so you can pause me if you, if you need me to. So each of the three states below is a numerical answer and that number corresponds to the position of the letter in the alphabet. So if the numerical answer was five, the letter would be E. So convert numbers to letters to uncover an abbreviation which you've hopefully come across before in life. Okie dokie, here we go. Cost on the right AV valve. Well, the right AV valve is a tricuspid. That means there's three. And the third letter is C. Nice. Sex chromosome number in humans, minus one. Well, sex chromosome number is number 23, minus one is 22. So the 22nd letter, thankfully I know the abbreviation because I can't the live me say what this is, it's V, it's V. Uh, 22nd letter is apparently, sorry, yeah, apparently V. Uh, polypeptide chains and hemoglobin, I know that one, there's four of them. The fourth letter is D, C, V, D, cardiovascular disease. Now we've not really had to look too much at cardiovascular disease. Not really. I mean, we, we've, you know, we, we, I know we're talking about the heart, but we don't really go into big cardiovascular disease and issues along those sort of lines. But in order to appreciate why you might need to do an ECG, well, we need to appreciate what cardiovascular disease is. So it is the general term for any condition that affects the heart or the blood vessels. So what I'm going to try to do in this YouTube lesson is looking at the diagnosis of these conditions. But of course, because it's so beautifully linked to just generally heart structure function, there is obviously going to be lots of opportunities to apply knowledge from early parts in this topic. So I have three patients in a cardiology ward who are waiting to see you. Shall we meet them? So, before we get into meeting them, what sort of symptoms would you expect these three patients complaining to have? What could they have? So pause me, think, what could a cardiovascular disease symptom be? Chest pain and, and you know, indicating a heart attack is, is quite a good symptom, if I'm honest. Uh, any of the symptoms of stroke, because again, that's a blood vessel based disease, isn't it? Stroke, blood vessel. A dull or cramping leg pain. Again, that's very much uh, blood vessel issues. Hair loss on the legs and feet. Hair loss on the legs and feet. Feel free to research that, Google that, why that is associated with cardiovascular disease, losing hair on your legs and your feet. If you've got any other answer and you're confident it's to do with CVD, fantastic. I can't obviously check it, can I? Because this, this isn't live. Still, risk factors. So, again, another numbers to letters to get you thinking. And the answer to this number to letters is a risk factor for cardiovascular disease. So, pause whilst you think. Here we go. Hydrogen atoms and molecule of glucose is 12. And the 12th letter is L. Chambers in the human heart, there are four chambers, the two atrium, two ventricles. So that's the fourth letter, which is D. Stage of the cardiac cycle times four. Well, the cardiac cycle is diastole, 
atrial systole and ventricular systole. So it's three stages times four is 12 LDLs, low density lipoproteins. LDLs, low density lipoproteins, are a risk factor of cardiovascular disease. LDLs are a way in which cholesterol is transported around the body. So an accumulation of LDLs, this isn't directly related to the spec, boys and, uh, boys and girls, so you're welcome to skip this if, if you really don't care. Uh, accumulation of LDLs in the first layer of the tunica intima, the first layer of, of your blood vessels, is considered to be an important early step in the initiation of a disease called atherosclerosis. Atherosclerosis is effectively where your blood vessels become brittle, in particular your arteries. So arteries are designed to be very flexible, they're all the elastic fibres. Imagine that instead of being flexible, it was brittle. So every time there was an increased pressure, they would break. And therefore that would cause massive internal bleeding should it, should it break, should it in the wrong place. So atherosclerosis can cause quite significant issues in organ failure, heart attacks, strokes, etc. Still, the LDL buildup increases permeability of the endothelium, and it means you actually retain even more. So it's also a positive feedback method. So when LDLs actually do sort of accumulate, it actually leads to more and more accumulation. It just makes that endothelial layer more and more permeable. So we get this uncontrolled uptake of LDL particles by white blood cells and macrophages, and that leads to plaques. And the plaques are what causes atherosclerosis and this really brittle blood vessel. The plaques as well protrude into the lumen of the artery that reduces blood throw, increases blood pressure, uh, and can lead to a blood clot called thrombosis. And if that plaque ruptures, very dangerous. But in addition to high levels of cholesterol's risk factor for CVD, there are numerous others. So before we begin our round of the cardiology, uh, cardiology wards, and we'll, we'll, we'll do that in the live lesson, uh, I've got two patients that I'd like to have a look at with me. Cormac O'Doyle, beautiful Irish name there, and Mark Cowman. Cowman. So all I want is, uh, we're not going to write down a thing in the notes because I'm just going to show you the notes, but we'll just talk through them together. So this is Cormac. So Cormac, if you look at his look at his sort of details, you can see his cholesterol test results indicate a cholesterol layer level that is higher than normal. He's also already been diagnosed with type two diabetes. His blood pressure is okay, but his BMI suggests he is overweight. So Paul Cormac is having a discussion uh, with the doctor regarding his diet. He's going to have to kill. Oh, he's got a book return for six months. Bless him. So he's got to go back in six months. So they'll keep an eye on that diet, see if he can get his cholesterol down. So this is just the starting point, because we're going to talk about Cormac a little bit later as well when we're doing these ECGs. We're going to see if we can indicate ECGs that would represent Cormac. Let's see what else. Mark Cowman. Mark Cowman has dark poo. Dark stools. Apparently, he's, he's, that darkness is caused by bleeding from his stomach. Ugh. He's been drinking and smoking a lot, entertaining a lot of his clients. I wonder what clients he has, bless him. Oh, God, he, oh, he's been sent for an endoscopy on his stomach to check for possible ulcer. I wonder which way they're going. Uh, stomach, I, I presume, must be going down the mouth. That's not too bad. He's also clearly suffering from stress. Severe headaches, sleeping problems. Ooh, bless him. Uh, so he's signed up work for two weeks. Strong sleeping pills to help him sleep. And on his checkup, his BMI is okay, so he's a healthy weight, but his blood pressure is too high. Okay. So we've got someone drinking and smoking. High blood pressure. Bleeding from the stomach. Now, that I must admit, Mark Howmans might not suggest... You might not suggest a cardiovascular disease. That could be so many different things going on. But again, we're going to use the idea of what an ECG is to try and indicate, you know, what is wrong with Mark Hellman? Can we understand it if we sent him for an ECG and got those results? And that's going to be one of the focuses of the live lesson this week. 
So I've emailed this uh, to you with the link that this uh, Word document where you can fill it in yourself, just with the medical notes. Uh, over the course of the live lesson, we'll fill in the rest as well. This this bit here will be basically the graph of the ECG, what it would look like, and the official diagnosis from our work. Ted Honor, we will get to in the live lesson as well. We've not up to good old Teddy yet. So testing them. Another number of the letters. Pause me. Okay, carbon atoms and molecule ribose, there's five, so that's an E. You can probably see where I'm going with this. Nucleotide bases and a code on three, so C. Taxonomic divisions after domain. <laughs> okay, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Seven. <laughs> ECG, electrocardiogram. So let me show you. That diagram is an electrocardiogram. And it's that diagram that you're going to have to get very familiar with. What we do to do an electrocardiogram, I don't know if any of you have had, ever had this done before, it's really quite cool. I got it done, I've only ever done it once in my life, and it was during a uh, university open day at the University of Liverpool for the physiology course that I actually ended up doing at the University of Liverpool. They, they impressed me. Um, so electrocardiogram, what they do, they stick a series of sensors attached to your skin. And those sensors are able to test the heart's rhythm and electrical activity. So we've been talking in previous lesson about heart action, about the wave of excitation uh, coming from the sinoatrial node. Well, th well, that wave of excitation can be measured using these electrodes. So they detect the tiny little electrical changes on the skin that arise from the cardiac muscle Okay, you might, you probably won't be familiar with the terms depolarizing and repolarizing, but um, it's something we get to in a bit more detail when we look at nerve fibers. And because, because cardiac tissue has the ability to propagate electrical impulses like a nerve fiber, they do the same idea. Um, so the, the, those cardiac cells are depolarizing and repolarizing. In other words, when that wave of excitation spreads over them, the charge inside and outside of their membranes changes. And as it changes, we, we say it depolarizes, that's when it becomes more positive, and it repolarizes when it becomes more negative during each heartbeat. Either way, it's an electrical activity which you can measure. So the activity is then shown on a machine. Um, I, I remember at the University of Liverpool, so we're talking 2007, maybe. Um, it was on this very old looking computer, and it was just this little trace that was coming up all the time. Uh, the activity and any variations from normal can be seen in treatment as given. So this is a normal ECG. That rhythm that you see there where it goes, just show you, there's a small peak down, a big peak up and down, a little break, and then a slight raise and down again. That is one beat of the heart. So starting here, going up once, big up down once, and then the final up down, that is one full beat of the heart. So this diagram here, I've got two heartbeats. And this shape, this sort of distance between the different peaks, that's normal, known as the sinus rhythm. And if, you're, if your heart is working as it should be, that is the shape your ECG will have. So uh, if you do go into any research with this, or um, you even just go to do a bit of work in a hospital for a little bit, uh, don't get electrocardiograms confused with echocardiograms. Uh, echocardiograms direct sound waves at the heart, and we use them to produce like video images of the heart in motion, which again, really cool, uh, but obviously a different way of measuring the heart. They're both cardiograms because they are measuring the heart, measuring activity to do with the heart. Um, electro is measuring electrical activity, echo is using the sound waves. Still, this is the last thing I'm actually going to do in this YouTube lesson. And we, then we'll be ready to do the live lesson next week. Um, okay, so the entirety of that diagram there represents 1.62 seconds. I've already said that that diagram there shows two, exactly two heartbeats. Calculate the heart rate per minute to the nearest beat, so round it. So pause me, because I'm going to go through the answer now.
So in that 1.62 seconds, the bit we know is that there are two heartbeats. So up, down, up, down, up, down. That's one heartbeat. So I've got two heartbeats there. So one heartbeat is, on average, 0 0.81 seconds. There are 60 seconds in a minute. So 60 divided by 0 0.81 suggests we have a heart rate of 74 beats per minute. Anywho, that is, ooh, that is all I'm doing in this YouTube lesson. You are, of course, very, very, very welcome to look ahead in the textbook. If this has got your juices flowing about ECGs, look ahead in the textbook. Look at the different graphs. Look at things like tachycardia, brachycardia, bradycardia. These are all things that we are going to look at, obviously, in the live lesson. And we're going to look at it in the context of those patients that we've just seen. So I'll see you, well, I'll see 12C on Tuesday, I'll see 12B on Wednesday, and I'll see 12A on Thursday. See you soon. Bye.